Martin, I'll hand over to you for a quick introduction. Yeah, okay, let me uh, just give, give some background um, before we, we pass across to Matthew. So uh, thanks, Gary. Um, my name is Martin Shaw. I work for Xylem uh, as a non-revenue water solution architect based in Shatalam, Malaysia. Uh, my role involves visiting water companies throughout Southeast Asia to discuss their NRW problems with them um, and to talk about possible solutions. One of the most progressive water companies in the region is IS Langor. Uh, IS Langor are the water operator for Kuala Lumpur and surrounding areas. They're a, a large company. Matthew will give you some uh, information about the size of, of their operation shortly. Uh, and they have adopted a very proactive approach to NRW management. They've got something like 2000 DMAs, which help them monitor their distribution system very closely. Uh, and a couple of years ago, they were undertaking a proactive leak detection program on their trunk mains, um, which is something that many water companies still don't do because they don't realize that their big pipes are leaking. Um, this program by IS Langle was finding many leaks on their trunk mains, but due to the length of the network, it could be years between surveys, meaning that leak run times could have durations of months or even years. So at the end of 2017, they issued a tender to monitor 6,000 kilometers of transmission mains. Xylem won the contract, and we're now about three quarters of the way into a three and a half year project. So this webinar is gonna look at uh, the advanced technology, how it works, um, the objectives of the project, and, and how we've been progressing. So uh, let me introduce you to Matthew Kennedy, Matthew's a, a project manager with Xylem. He's also based in the Shatalam office in Malaysia. Uh, and the Isolango project is just one of a number of projects that he's currently overseeing. Uh, Matthew is the best person to talk about the project. So let me hand back to you, Matt. All yours. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction, Martin. Um, and thank you, uh, Gary, for hosting me for the presentation. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, this afternoon, I'm going to present to you about a project that has been taking up my time for the past two years. Um, uh, it's based in Malaysia, as Martin mentioned. Um, I'll take you through um, the solution that Xylem has been providing for this project, some details on uh, IS Langle's trunk network, and how this uh, solution has been successfully implemented on the network. Um, a little bit on the current progress of the project and some of the lessons learned that we've had so far since we've been operating for the past couple of years. So to start off with um, on some background for the solution that we have provided here. So Xylem provides a number of um, digital solutions. Um, in this case, those that are applicable to trunk main monitoring, we refer to as uh, view, leak view, and surge view. Um, these assist with uh, decision support, NRW reporting, uh, continuous monitoring and alerting, and asset failure prediction. So for this particular case, um, leak view is being used to monitor the trunk mains 24-7 and provide alerting on uh, pipe bursts and leakage. And the search view product is being used to identify uh, potentially damaging surges on the pipes that may uh, be a predictor for pipe failure in the future. Um, I'll take you through a bit more of those later in the presentation. Supporting these uh, solutions, we also provide our own equipment uh, which you should be able to see on the screen at the moment. Uh, this sensing equipment includes an RTU, a hydrophone for measuring acoustic energy, a pressure sensor for measuring pressure within the pipeline. Although we don't use this on the project, we can also monitor other parameters such as flow and water quality. Um, these sensors are typically attached to the pipeline on a uh, one inch tapping. The reason we're using two different sensors is to enable us to detect different patterns of leakage on the pipelines. 
So each sensor has its own benefits and its own purpose. You should be able to see on the screen at the moment, when we have a burst, a rapid failure on the pipeline, this introduces a change in pressure or a transient. Uh, the pressure sensors that we use within this system are capable of measuring pressure up to 256 times per second. And this enables us to pick up the uh, failure of the pipe when it bursts. However, not all uh, leakage or bursts on pipes occurs as a transient. Some of them may start as pinhole leaks and gradually progress to be larger. These types of leaks typically you won't discover using pressure sensors and you may use hydrophones which help us to detect the slower growing leaks. Using both of these sensors we get a good mix of detecting the different types of leaks that can occur on the network. So this type of system can be applied anywhere across the water network. In this particular case, we're looking at the trunk mains, which would be the right-hand side of this diagram. But we can deploy within DMAs and on the smaller pipes, also within pump stations. And the benefit of using the high-resolution pressure recording, 256 readings per second, is that we can identify levels of surges that you wouldn't typically find with other types of sensors. And it's this resolution of data that enables us to see where operations may be damaging the pipe, whether that's overactive pumps or sudden shutoffs or startups with valves. I'll show you some further examples on this on this particular network a little later in the presentation. All of this is tied together within our view platform, which can not only integrate our own sensor data feeds, but those of other platforms and sensors across the network. This platform, the view platform, can run data analytics in real time, and so we get, can get a full picture of the entire network and what's going on, whether it's flow, pressure, acoustics, water quality, or other parameters. The system also provides flexible dashboards and reports so that the user can easily interrogate their data. So here's a quick screenshot of that system with a demonstration of the data plotting. So that covers some background on the solution that we've got here for this particular case. Um, I'll take you through a little bit more about ISL Angle and some of the issues that they've been facing, which has led us to this point and to using this solution. So for those of you not from Malaysia or not familiar with the region, ISL Angle is the utility covering the state of Selangor, um, which you can see here on the map. Um, Kuala Lumpur, the capital city, is located within Selangor itself. And a quick note on the name here, for those of you who don't speak Malay, um, air in Malay means water, not air. So we are talking about a water utility, not an air utility. Um, I also want to supply water to 2.4 million customer accounts, which covers 11 million people across the state of Selangor and the federal states of Putrajaya and Kuala Lumpur. Um, that's 86% domestic and 14% commercial, with quite a long length of pipe of 28,000 kilometers. Um, a particular relevance for the project that we're discussing, 6,200 kilometers of those are trunk mains at greater than 300 millimeters, which are comprised of around 81% uh, mild steel, and as you see there, a mixture of some other uh, materials. So from an NRW perspective, Icelandor have a long-standing goal to reduce their uh, NRW, which in January 2018 stood at 31.3%, um, with quite a lot of leaks and bursts being recorded per day. Um, they wanted to reduce the runtime of these leaks and bursts by providing uh, alarms and the pinpointing of the location of pipe failures. Um, and also from a proactive perspective, they wanted to identify the causes of some of the pressure surges on the trunk mains 
which might be damaging the pipe network and therefore help to extend its lifetime. So the project that we're referring to makes up a, uh, a small part or a part of uh, Ice Langle's overall leakage control uh, strategy, which can be broken down into proactive, reactive, and passive approaches. Um, Ice Langle do have a, um, a, a control room where customers can report in um, leaks in, in the field, which forms part of the passive approach, but they also carry out a more proactive uh, approach to leakage management by scanning and uh, walking their pipes with a combination of ground microphones and acoustic technologies. Um, similarly, with this system that we're now talking about, uh, they have a reactive approach for when pipes burst um, before customers can alert them. So the system that we're talking about from Xylem covers many of these uh, approaches to leakage control. So why trunk mains in particular? Um, when trunk mains burst, um, not just in Malaysia, but anywhere, they do cause a great deal of disruption. Um, this can be costly both uh, locally and to the economy, depending on the area being served by those mains. Um, in Malaysia, these trunk mains can often be in remote and infrequently visited areas, um, buried deep in, in either the jungle or plantations where people aren't usually passing by to even observe the leaks that may be surfacing. Um, one of these images here would be a rare example of one that has surfaced and is extremely obvious, um, but this isn't always the case. Um, but it is an example that on trunk mains you do get far higher leakage rates, so it is important to find them and fix them quickly. Uh, another reason for looking at trunk mains is that they typically are subject to very large operational pressure transients as a result of forming the backbone of the network with both pumping and large pressure gradient. So for the context of the project, what part of the network are we looking at and uh, how are we solving it? So I mentioned that there's 6,200 kilometers of pipeline and we're looking at those pipes that are between 300 and 2,200 millimeters. We're achieving this with approximately 1,800 sensors spread across that network with both pressure and acoustic uh, monitoring. Uh, to keep these sensors running continuously and to minimize the maintenance aspects, these are all being powered by a solar system, as you can see in the images there. And these sensors facilitate the leak view and surge view um, products that I mentioned in the earlier slide. Um, Martin uh, mentioned at the very beginning that this is a collaboration between Xylem and Isolangle. By no means a, uh, um, is this just us at Xylem. We are helping to design the solution and supply the equipment and monitor the data and issue alerts. But the installation, maintenance, and finding and fixing the leaks um, is falling under Isolangle. You can see in a, a rough um, procedure a uh, diagram on the right hand side of how we might get one of these sensors installed in the ground from planning, design, survey, providing the equipment, and then ensuring that data is monitored for providing leak alerts. So a little bit more on the types of deployment that we've got uh, that I alluded to earlier. Um, we are deploying both on above ground pipelines on S-bands that you can see in one of those images and within chambers. Uh, we achieve this with a solar system that you can see pictured there, powered by a large battery. Um, we have two particular designs. One of those is on a pole, pole mounted, and the other one is um, deployed directly onto the pipeline that you can see in the image at the bottom left there. So I mentioned that we had well, we're targeting around 1,800 sensors. We're currently 1,300 sensors into the project. Um, when we aren't uh, affected by international viral emergencies, we are able to deploy.
by around 80 sensors per month. And that has led us to the point of having over 250 pipelines being monitored at present. Uh, that network of sensors that you can see uh, pictured here is capable or is currently detecting around four leaks every week. Uh, this has increased from around a one per week, which although a leak per week has a nice ring to it, um, 12 months ago, that's something we have moved on from. So those 1,300 sensors now mean that we have an obscene amount of data to get through. That's over 500,000 cumulative days of sensor operation and two and a half trillion pressure readings. Um, as you can imagine, this requires a lot of data storage and a lot of analytics, which is where the benefit of our system assists with this data. No one person could possibly analyze this to look for leaks without the help of a computer. Um, this also includes over 7 million acoustic recordings. So we do pick up leaks, over 170 that were identified and fixed in 2019. We do also pick up a whole lot of other things. Um, I have heard cars driving past, people arguing, and some rather creepy things at night as well. Um, everything picked up by the hydrophones that we have installed in these pipes, and everything transmitted, recorded, and analyzed in real time. So the successes so far is we've managed, as I showed on the previous slides, we've managed to have a standard design that is rapidly deployable across the state. So that's gotten us to the point where in a couple of years we've been able to deploy 1,300 sensors, and a lot of that equipment is locally sourced, which also helps both in speeding up the supply chain, keeping things moving when there are international emergencies. Um, some other successes here is that through the alerts that we've been issuing, the response time to being aware uh, and fixing a leak is, has been reduced. Um, using the acoustic sensors, we're also being able to identify leaks before they burst, and therefore reducing the leak rates as well as the runtime, and therefore the total volume that's being lost. Where there are recurring leaks, on uh, particularly degraded sections of pipeline, we're able to pick those up as and when they occur, which is something you may not usually pick up by sweeping the pipeline with um, things like uh, hydrophones. Um, since we're continuously monitoring 24 seven, leaks that are appearing at night can be picked up. So we're not relying on the public to spot them appearing on pipes. The system is doing that for us at times when people aren't normally out and about, which means in some cases they can be identified, found, and fixed before people get up in the morning. Uh, now I mentioned that we're also, we're monitoring on the trunk mains, but the, one of the benefits of this network is we're also picking up leaks on the areas connected into those trunk mains that we're not specifically monitoring. So there's a wider benefit beyond the 6,200 kilometers that we're installed upon. Now, any project of this size wouldn't, wouldn't be without its challenges. You, you don't get 1,300 sensors deployed without having some problems. And at the beginning of the project, ramping up the coordination, of the survey design deployment and verifying that data has been a challenge just because it's a volume of data. Um, certainly from a customer perspective, um, Iceland have now gone from having no sensors to 1300 sensors and having no leaks reported onto them by the system to four leaks per week and a number of other, of other alerts. Um, so as a group, as a team, we've all had to uh, find ways of managing these alerts, uh, understanding them, and effectively dealing with them in a manner that's efficient. Uh, so this has required some education or appreciation of the leak finding teams in the field about the data that's being presented to them and how to interpret it. And some of this is a bit hard to visualize on the slide, but two things that aren't hard to visualize on the slide are perhaps 
the theft issues that we have had in some cases, the equipment is being stolen. Uh, we have mitigated and found ways around that and reduced that issue. But also one of the joys of being in Malaysia, as opposed to my home country, England, is that the animals here are somewhat more active and a slight bit more uh, interesting and, and dangerous. So we do get a few uh, animal invasions. Uh, rats can be fairly common. The middle picture may not be clear to you, but um, a monkey has come down from the tree and swung around on the sensor and pulled the cable out. And on the right-hand side would be a large python that has been found in one of the chambers during deployment. So this does make things a little bit more uh, interesting and does require a little bit more site planning from the uh, uh, health and safety perspective. Um, so those are the successes and challenges. Um, I'll show you a little bit more of the, the data and some of the case studies that we've got from this, this monitoring network. Um, so what have we learned from, uh, from the data that we've collected? So the pressure data that we've man, uh, been monitoring has shown that the pressure transients, as an example there on this slide, they can travel a long way along these trunk lanes. Uh, we have examples of this going 30 kilometers or more. Um, you know, if there are no valves uh, closed from point to point, these transients can spread a long way. So operational changes or leaks can, in some cases, be detected at a quite a long distance. Um, we've also learned that a lot of these leaks can show transients um, or initiate the leak before they even surface and before they're apparent to the public or people that go looking for them. So this is a key benefit of having a monitoring system like this, is that you're aware of these things before they are visible. Um, we've also learned that with the acoustics, uh, traditionally you may expect that the detection distance using acoustics for leaks is, is uh, limited, uh, we'll say around 500 meters. What we have found though is that um, some of these cases, the hydrophones are capable of picking up changes in the overall flow inside the pipe. So even though leaks may be occurring at some distance from the hydrophone, the flow in the pipe has increased and the hydrophones are able to pick up the sound of that increased flow in the pipe. And that trend leads us to the awareness of a leak, whether it is near the sensor or not, it is still to be determined on site. Uh, but the hydrophones can provide some early warnings of leaks at distance. Um, not every leak is producing um, patterns used from acoustics or pressure. It may be one or the other, or both. So it's important to be monitoring multiple parameters to give you the best chance of identifying leaks. Um, we've also learned that the pump behavior that we're monitoring can be indicative of uh, present leaks and stresses on the pipe. And we found that the trigger levels for altitude valves and uh, non-return valves at pumping stations are important in controlling the transients on the network. So a specific use case of the system in, uh, in action. Uh, this is a leak that we had fairly, fairly early on on the project. Um, and quite a large one as well. Um, there had been a, a joint slip on one of the pipes that you can see pictured there. Um, now, to talk you through the data on this slide, the middle graph you can see a green line, and this is representing the measured pressure on the pipe. Uh, a lot of pressure measurement um, for, as you may find in a utility SCADA system will only record uh, infrequent intervals of around, say, 15 minutes. And using that type of system, you may determine that there's a leak on your network when the pressure drops below a specified threshold. Um, we call this a, a low rate alert. Um, using that sort of methodology, you might see or decide that a leak was occurring at somewhere within the red circle that's highlighted uh, there. Once pressure has perhaps dropped below, and it may be hard for you to see, 10 meters on this chart. Using transients, we can show here that it's possible to identify the occurrence of that leak up to, um, we're talking about six to 12 hours uh, before 
you may have decided a leak was present using low rate of pressure. Um, so you can see here the evidence of two transients, one occurring at uh, 10.45 and another occurring at around 3 a.m. Uh, both of these showing progressive slippages in, in the, um, the joint on that pipe, leading to uh, downtrend in pressure and the eventual shutdown of the pipe. What you can also see on this chart, perhaps if you have very good eyes, is at the bottom of the red circle you will see some blue bars. This represents the, the hydrophone acoustic energy on the pipe as well, that you can see has increased as the pressure has dropped and the flow on the pipe is uh, more water is being lost. So this is a good case of uh, early warning. Um, no uh, reports from the public were made for this leak. So this one was wholly detected by the system. So I also mentioned, um, here's another example of uh, leaks being picked up at distance. Um, this particular case, um, we can see on the graph here, the blue line in this case is pressure, and the green bars are the acoustic energy. Um, there was a leak of around 20 liters per second, and this wasn't picked up clearly in the pressure data, potentially because the pressure is relatively low on the line. And this leak, although in the picture you can see it's jetting out of the ground, that was after excavation. Before excavation, this was, it was a similar flow rate, but flowing directly into a drain or a river, uh, and was not visible above ground. Um, I think those teams had to go looking for this. Um, and the leak was found one and a half kilometers from the sensor that uh, initiated the alert. And that was on the basis of the increased acoustic energy that you can see in the green bars on the, on the chart here. So there's a clear increase and that will have reduced once the leak was repaired. Okay. So another example that we have here is um, we will know that the pumps are providing uh, flow into these pipes uh, in many cases and the red line on here once you begin to understand this data is showing effectively the on and off nature of the pumps pressure increasing and decreasing as they are turned on and off on the pipeline towards the end of this trend there is an increasing uh, blurriness to, to the, the data being presented as the pump is turning on more and more, um, turning on and off more and more. And this might be happening as some flow is being lost from the pipe. So by understanding the pump behavior, you may be able to understand leaks on the pipes the pumps are pumping into. And this leads into um, how we're, or how the system is helping to predict areas or um, operational patterns that may be damaging the pipes. So I mentioned that typically you may have pressure recorded every 15 minutes in a lot of traditional systems. Uh, and some systems you may even record at 30 second intervals. But the benefit of recording at up to 256 times per second is that you can realize or visualize the the true changes in pressure that are occurring on the pipe. So this allows us to see things like cavitation, where it wouldn't be immediately apparent. Um, so the example here, you can see with the yellow arrow, on the 30 second data, that green spike is up to uh, 110, 120 meters of pressure. On the 15 meter data, it only registers as 70 meters of pressure. On the 256 hertz data, it's over 135 meters of pressure. The 256 hertz data is also highlighting that this surge is also around 70 meters or more than the target pressure that the pump is trying to achieve. Um, so it's these types of um, issues that the system is helping to identify, but over 20 at the time that I made this slide last year, I haven't counted up to uh, the, the present day. Um, so here are some other examples of what that type of monitoring can also pick up. So we can see overactive pumps where they're turning on and off. They're hunting around a trigger level. Um, this particular
graph showing increases of 40 and decreases of 40 meters every minute or two. And this is occurring all day, every day. Um, as on the previous slide, unnecessary surges where we're introducing more energy into the network than we need to by having the pumps start up too quickly. And as I mentioned, cavitation, zero pressures and all the low. Um, some of these may only occur for 30 seconds or a minute, but they're still happening. And these are arguably more damaging to the pipes and the surge pressures as well. So this can be picked up by the frequent pressure monitoring. And by identifying these, we can find the cause and address it so that it doesn't prove to be damaging for the pipes in the long run. So that more or less brings me to, to the end of the, of the presentation. Um, so just to wrap up on some conclusions from a lot of what we've run so far, um, we successfully set up a monitoring network on our Sunball's pump uh, trunk mains. And that has so far effectively complemented the existing leak detection methods um, and helped them bring down their, their NRW uh, measures. Um, it's helped to provide early warnings and reduces leak runtime and therefore uh, the amount of water lost. And it's been able to identify the potential causes of leakage on those pipes so that we can proactively uh, reduce those. Um, we've used multiple sensor feeds to identify those leaks, so we're not relying on only one type of data. And we've had uh, great success in identifying recurring leaks so that um, typical traditional pipe sweeping methods, um, which would pick up a leak and then get, have it repaired we can uh, ensure that, that that repair sticks or that a particularly leaky pipe doesn't remain so. Um, by monitoring 24 seven, um, we've been able to monitor trunk mains during the daytime with the acoustics, not just at night. Um, unlike smaller pipes, there isn't a night pattern of, of leakage on trunk mains. And we've also found that our acoustic sensors also behave a bit like flow meters, which is uh, an interesting result of what we've done so far. So um, I've probably waffled long enough, and I've been speaking very much into the void as well. So hopefully you're all still there. And um, if you have any questions, um, I'd like to stop there and, and let you ask. Yeah, thanks, Matt. That, that's really good. Um, if I could just expand on something you mentioned earlier, um, this, this really um, is a very successful project and a lot of the reason for the success is down to Isolangor. Um, often with projects, the most difficult part is the organizational change management that comes with adopting new systems. Um, and with this system, you get a lot of information coming in every day. Um, and Isolangor have been able to adapt themselves, they've changed the way they've done things from how they used to do it previously. Uh, and because of that, um, that, that's one of the reasons why the project has been so successful. Okay, so if there's any questions, we'll be more than happy to address them. If there's any questions, people can type them into the chat, the Zoom chat. I can see we have one question here. Um, have we used Smart Ball Sahara? Um, Martin, you might be best placed to answer this one. Um, we have. It was um, Smart Ball Sahara um, was used previously on a previous project um, by Isolangor, um, but it hasn't formed part of this project. Um, certainly, they're complementary technologies. Um, Smart Ball Sahara are deployed um, for spot leak surveys. Um, and the advantage that they have is that they can pick up very, very small leaks um, that acoustic sensors that are deployed on the main um, can't detect. Um, so yeah, yeah, we, we have used it. Um, they're complementary. Um, and I think that's, um, that, that's the best way to describe those technologies, that they're the best working in hand in hand. 
Um, in terms of cost per kilometer of pipe, um, look, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I'm not sure that we can answer that um, as a straightforward answer. It really depends on economy of scale um, in terms of how, my, how the, the entire length of kilometers that you want to monitor. The, the more you want to monitor, um, the cheaper it would be. Um, so that, that's really all I can say on that. Um, and and it, it is a service as well. Um, we do need to mention that um, it, it's, a, it's a service that supports the operation. Um, so we're not just um, selling the sensors, we're selling the support as well. Other questions? Um, what does Isolang would do after you've identified leaks? Um, it's standard leak detection. Um, so the way that this technology works is that it identifies areas um, where we believe the leaks are, and then IS Langor send out their leak teams, um, and they use um, standard technology to pinpoint exactly where the leaks are. Matt, have you got anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, so we'll typically communicate an alert to IS Langor um, through um, email and instant messaging, and We'll liaise with them if they need further information to help identify where the leak is. Uh, sometimes we'll see operational changes that um, may or may not be a leak. And so there is often a bit of data exchange to assist with uh, finding them. I can see there um, you're asking how many of the 170 leaks identified were repaired. I'd like to think that it's, it's all of them although without checking all of the records off the top of my head, I can tell you. Um, so I can see we also have another question here. Um, how low of a pressure uh, can Vicente work with accurately? So as is often the case with these systems, it depends is quite a standard answer. Um, it really does uh, vary uh, with what you are trying to detect. Uh, so if you're trying to detect leaks with pressure, the lower the pressure, the less of a transient pattern or a transient signal you would expect to uh, see. Uh, similar with acoustics, and um, you would expect those patterns to be less under a lower pressure system. That doesn't mean that it's impossible, and we do have um, sensors installed with other utilities on intermittent supplies and uh, low, low pressure systems. So if there's some issue or problem that you'd like us to solve, then we're happy to get in touch. So. And the, the business model, to, to address that question, um, the sensors are either uh, rented or purchased. Um, we sell it as a software as a solution. Um, so the data from the sensors is then held on a cloud. Um, and the analysis can be undertaken either by ourselves or it can be undertaken by the client, um, whichever, um, whichever um, method uh, is preferred by the client. We, we, we run both at the moment. Um, we have clients where we do the analysis and we send the alerts out. Um, but we also have clients um, who like to keep everything in-house um, and they have their control room. They have the data coming in uh, and they respond to it as well. Do we have any more questions? I have another one here for what is the detectable burst size for transient pressure. Um, so again, this, this will depend. It will depend upon the size of the pipe, the material of the pipe, the pressure in the pipe. However, on this particular project, we have seen bursts detected from anywhere between about half a litre or one litre per second, up to 70 litres per second. Um, so it really can depend, um, and a 
critical element in the detection of those bursts is that the transient signal can reach the sensor. So we cannot detect bursts if a valve is closed between the sensor and where the burst occurred. So good operational knowledge of the network and GIS information does facilitate better leak detection. Okay, any, any final questions from anyone? Um, I'm, I'm, rece I'm receiving some more questions uh, just okay. to me. <laughs> okay. So I have, I have another two here. Um, uh, are all sensors Xylem based or are they third party? Um, so for this particular project, the, the sensors that we have running on the system are Xylem sensors. However, uh, we can integrate with any sensors data that comes into the view system. So we can, we do have a handful of sensors um, in for Iceland or where we have connected to the flow feeds from insertion flow meters. Um, for other customers around the world, we are continuously monitoring water quality data, pump data, um, flow, temperature, pH, turbidity, there is a very long list. Basically, if it's measurable, we can present it and we can analyze it. Um, I have, uh, yeah, okay. So um, that's, that's all the questions I have. Ah, we've got one more. Oh, it's a message from you. <laughs> okay, so if we don't have any more questions, um, then uh, we will finish it now. And for people who want to see it again, it will be up on the YouTube channel later today. Thank you.